everybody, Jason here from Ghostbusters News, and this is it, uh, my review of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Now, before I start talking about the film here, there's a few things that we need to, to get into first, we need to touch on, and that is a bit of a spoiler warning, as later on in this video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about some spoilers. I'm not gonna give you like every plot point to Frozen Empire, but there are gonna be some key details that I'm gonna touch on. Uh, however, again, I'm gonna let you know before I do so. Also, I'm coming into this under the impression that you watching this right now, you have seen pretty much all the film trailers, uh, you've watched all the clips that are online, so what may be a spoiler to you uh, may not be one to me, depending, again, on, on what you've seen. All right, so Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, uh, it premiered last week in New York City. I was invited out by Sony Pictures Ghost Corps to attend the event, uh, the world premiere event, as press, which blew my mind. I spent two days in New York, and again, before we get into the actual film review, I think I should maybe talk about that trip just a little bit. Of course, I took part in the usual Ghostbuster sightseeing, uh, visiting places like the New York Public Library, but also uh, I, along with Jim Meritato of Extraplasm Podcast and friend of the site, J.D. Raymer, we were able to cruise around the city inside an Ecto-1. Now this, it's not the Ecto-1, it is the fan film car, the Ecto-1 New Jersey, but uh, yeah, it caused mass hysteria throughout the streets of NYC. And it was crazy because not only did we drive around New York City, but we pulled up at Hook and Ladder 8, the Ghostbusters Firehouse. And if you've been checking out our socials, you know that in celebration of Frozen Empire, the building has been given a slight makeover, appearing, well, frozen. From there, we then came back to Hook and Ladder the following day, and it was just a sea of people. Now, also in attendance at Hook and Ladder was some of the cast and crew from Frozen Empire. Uh, this included Ernie Hudson, Logan Kim, McKenna Grace, and director Gil Kinnan. And this served as a really nice prelude as to what was to come, because just mere hours later was the Frozen Empire world premiere, and I, did, I, I mentioned it, Ghostbusters News, we got press for the event, and this allowed us to interview cast and crew. And our location, it was unbelievable because we were stationed nearly right at the entranceway. Pretty much you had the Ecto-1, and then you had this like Ghostbusters press box with Ghostbusters news being joined by, again, Jim Meritato of Extraplasm Podcast. There was also Yes Have Some Podcast, AJ Quick of Ghostbusters fans, Jay of Geek Dad Life, and YouTube channel On The Scene Adventures. It was such a chill and relaxed environment, uh, for the most part, especially when like 10 feet away, you had 50 plus, 75 plus photographers like clamoring for photos of, of you know, Finn Wolfhard and Paul Rudd just screaming at the top of their lungs while we were just kind of sitting there and, and waiting for people to walk by so, so we could interview them. Which I should mention, if you haven't checked them out already, we've got a ton of interviews up here on the Ghostbusters News YouTube channel, and this includes Finn Wolfhard, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, Carrie Coon, and so many more. Now, all the insanity that was taking place uh, both on that day and really within that whole trip, uh, I almost forgot that I was about to watch uh, a brand new Ghostbusters movie. And um, not only was I about to watch a Ghostbusters movie, but everybody in that like Ghostbusters press box, uh, we were actually in the same theater as the Ghostbusters Frozen Empire cast and crew. It was an unforgettable experience, and I, I honestly cannot thank Sony Pictures, Ghost Core, producer Eric Reich enough for this opportunity. But with that said, we gotta talk about the movie. And I'm not gonna be reading off of like a script today, um, and the fact that I attended the world premiere as press, just to let you know, uh, no, that, that, that's not swaying what I think of the film. Um, I, I'm not trying to stay in Sony's good graces or anything like that. Uh, I, I'm just gonna give you my unfiltered thoughts here. Uh, as well, again, I, I, I said it earlier, there are gonna be some spoilers, but before I, I kind of start talking about the, the, the slightly heavier spoilers, uh, I'll give you a warning. So, did I like Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? Yes. Did I love Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? Yes. Uh, I know for the past several months when it comes to promotion of the film, uh, in terms of interviews and in, in, in magazine articles, 
there's been this talk, especially from director Gil Kennan, that the film, it does take some influence from the real Ghostbusters animated series. And right from the get-go, like when you see the Spangler family, when you're reintroduced to the Spanglers and Gary Gruberson, you really get kind of that real Ghostbusters vibe. I mean, they're in the Ecto-1, they're out on the call, they're hunting down the Hell's Kitchen sewer dragon. I mean, this is not unlike how a lot of those real Ghostbusters episodes, they would have opened up. And keeping with the Spanglers, uh, one dynamic, one plot thread of this film uh, is kind of the relationship between Gary Gruberson and the Spanglers, uh, really Phoebe. I mean, last time we saw him and, and her together, he was really just her teacher, like, you know, summer school teacher. And now he's pretty much her stepfather, but he's still kind of the same character at the beginning of the movie. You know, he, he's happy-go-lucky. He's not really reprimanding her. Um, he's not being a father figure. So he kind of has to find that throughout the film. And it's good that that kind of like real world situation, uh, it's really at the heart of Frozen Empire because uh, also in this movie is an ancient evil called Garaka. And this is where the horror element, it comes into play, giving us some pretty shocking imagery for a Ghostbusters film and the stakes that just seem to get higher and higher. Seriously, this is the very first time that I've ever felt like a, a lead character in a Ghostbusters movie could die, I, at least like in the second or, or third act. And when it comes to these characters, these lead characters, there's a lot of them. Uh, of course, you have the OGs, Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, Ernie Hudson, Annie Potts, William Atherton. There's also Afterlife's returning cast, which does include Podcast and Lucky. And then there's also new characters played by Kumail Nanjiani, Patton Oswalt, James Acaster, as well as Emily Ellen Lind. So to say the least, uh, there, there's a lot of characters to kind of juggle in this movie. Uh, and to its credit, uh, it does it rather well. I mean, there are some that I feel like they kind of get a the, the short end of the stick. In particular, James Acaster. I would have loved to see him a lot more because the, uh, the, the, the actual scenes that he's in and the dialogue that he's given, when he is speaking, he's usually quite funny. Patton Oswalt does a great job. Uh, his role is, is a very direct purpose to kind of, you know, move the plot forward. And then you've got Emily Ellen Lynn and also uh, Kumail Nanjiani, uh, both of them being introduced and both playing pivotal roles in Frozen Empire. And I will say that when it comes to Kumail, to me, he, he steals this film unexpectedly. Like, I didn't think he was going to be in it all that much. He's in it a pretty great deal. And for pretty much every scene he is in, uh, yeah, he, he steals it. And, and actually, speaking of that, Frozen Empire, uh, I, I'm, I'm elated to say because the trailer has made it seem really dark and, and horrific and everything. And it does have scenes that are quite horrifying, to be honest. Uh, again, especially for a Ghostbusters movie. But I, I'm so happy to just tell you, to let you know that Frozen Empire is funny. Like, there are some great bits in here. Uh, some of the best, I would say, in the entire franchise, especially, like, when we're first reintroduced to Dan Aykroyd, Ray Stans. And, and speaking about the OGs as well, Bill Murray uh, in Frozen Empire, uh, this is, like, Peter Venkman circa 84. Like, I, I, I don't want to, like, get your hopes up too high, but Bill Murray delivers here. He's not phoning it in. I feel like he's happy to be there. I know he's got a lot of faith in director Gil Kinnan and the young cast. So given his hesitation and reluctancy to make a sequel for like decades beforehand, uh, it's wild to see him back and in such rare form. And with that comedy and with that kind of like semi in you know, a horror, uh, the movie's also touching. Um, I kind of alluded to the Spangler family and Gary Gruberson and where everybody kind of like resides there. And uh, there, there's, a, there's a moment that uh, something said, like, just one word, really. And uh, it, it, it got me. It got me. So I feel like at this point, it, it's time to kind of get into some of the semi-spoilers. You know, the good stuff, the meat on the bone. So, um, yeah, if, if you want to go into this movie uh, being a, as blind as possible, despite the stuff I've already said, uh, which I don't think there was too many heavy spoilers in there. If there were, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, if you want to come into this movie kind of going in a little blind, uh, yeah, again, just, just turn away now and, and come back after you've watched it. And when you do so, comment down below and, and let us know what you thought of A Frozen Empire. With that said, let's get into some semi-spoilers. So one area that does concern me, at least when it comes to fans' response, uh, is the addition of some added, like, magical spiritual elements uh, regarding 
Nanjiani's character, uh, Nadim, I believe his name is in the film, um, he, he aids the Ghostbusters in, in, in kind of busting uh, Garaka. That, that's, 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 a, that's kind of a key thing. I'm not going to tell you how and, and how it happens or anything, but he does kind of help uh, in the movie. And um, I don't know. It, it, again, it kind of feels like an episode of the real Ghostbusters in the respects where sometimes that big bust, uh, they get the job done, but it, they, they did require like extra help. And that, that does happen in Frozen Empire. I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, I, I think I'm saying great way too much in, in this video. But yeah, I, I really did enjoy this this part of the film, uh, this kind of story element. But I, I can definitely see some fans kind of like raising an eyebrow and being like, this is a little too far. Despite the fact that we, we're in a franchise with, uh, you know, a hundred foot tall marshmallow man and river of slime and... Oh, and speaking of uh, Kumel's character, uh, Nadim, there is a scene with, with him and Bill Murray. And Nadim, he's wearing the Lewis Tully Collender helmet. And this is probably another contender in, in the top three of my favorite parts of this movie, at least when it comes to the, the comedy aspect. Uh, it's hilarious. Emily Ellen Lynn's character, uh, the one that has been like shrouded in, in secrecy, like nobody really knew uh, who she was playing, in this film, I mean, heck, on the red carpet, I, I had a chance to interview her and I asked her like, you know, hey, we're gonna watch the movie in like 20 minutes, who do you play? And uh, she she was still stone-faced, she, she wouldn't tell me. But uh, I, I, I don't wanna really spoil it for you, uh, even though this is kind of a semi-spoiler section. Just to let you know, uh, her character does play, again here, a key role in Frozen Empire, um, a very contained character. Like, I cannot see her, if there's another Ghostbusters movie, it really wouldn't make any sense for her to be back. Um, she's here to move this story along. She's here to kind of help further the, uh, and develop kind of like the Phoebe character. And with that, uh, her character kind of further creates like a divide between Phoebe and, and the rest of the Spanglers and, and in particular, Gary, Gary Gruberson there. Um, and oh, and I, I guess I should also say that there was a lot of talk, a lot of mention, a lot of uh, kind of conspiracy theories out there that uh, Emily Ellen Lynn, she was gonna be playing Garaka. Um, that, that's not the case whatsoever. Her character and Garaka's character, even though they're kind of connected through the story, um, yeah, they're, they're still two, two separate entities. And because I was curious, and that means I'm pretty sure a lot of you were also curious, uh, Garaka is a he. Uh, there was a lot of talk, again, people thought Emily Ellen Lynn was playing Garaka possibly, uh, so Garaka may have been a she, or maybe Garaka was kind of like Gozer, really none of the above or really all of the above. Um, but no, when it comes to Garaka, addressed many times as he in the film. And I did just mention her a second ago, but uh, McKenna Grace, uh, unsurprisingly, uh, she, she, she's fantastic again as Phoebe Spangler in this movie. Another highlight here is race stance and podcast, kind of like their budding friendship, uh, kind of their mentorship. Podcast Logan Kim, he is great in this, at least for the scenes that he's in. With Kim, uh, I do kind of share the same sentiment as I did with, with uh, James Acaster, that I just wish there was more podcasts. And in speaking of his screen time, I gotta say the highlight, if not the scene with him and Ray and Ray's a cult, and they're filming an Instagram story, an Instagram reel, whatever they were filming, it's hilarious. But there's also a moment where uh, him and uh, Phoebe, uh, Phoebe Spangler, McKenna Grace, they, they, they join up again, and his excitement, just freaking hysterical. What to talk about next. Uh, ghosts, how about ghosts? You like ghosts, I like ghosts. Uh, and we got them in, in Ghostbusters. Uh, there is the library ghost from the original 84 film. She is, she's back. And her scene is uh, exactly what you've seen in the trailers. There's really nothing else to it than that. And from what I saw, uh, and keep in mind, I was um, like in the first row, massive, massive screen. I had to like tilt my head up to look at it. And I had to like turn my head left to right to, to see what was going on at, at times. Um, so I may have missed something, but I don't think there was like really any like Easter eggs when it comes to like other ghosts from the franchise, like appearing like in Afterlife, the bug eye ghost from the Kenner 
you know, real Ghostbusters toy line, it appeared. Um, however, in this one, I, I don't think there was any Scaleri Brothers or Fearsome Flush or anything like that. That said, uh, they do reference Ghostbusters 2 a bit in this movie. There is a great like news scene that happens where they kind of show the events of 1989 and they show the Statue of Liberty like walking down the street. Um, so yeah, for those out there that for some odd reason are clinging to the fact that Ghostbusters 2 is not canon anymore, uh, yeah, it, it totally is. Another ghost that I guess I should also talk about here, I, we kind of got like sidetracked with Ghostbuster 2 talk, but uh, Pukey. Pukey is in this movie for really like two scenes. <laughs> and again, it's pretty much what you've seen in the trailer. His job in this movie is, is just that, it, it's to puke. He, he pukes at like the, the kind of like the glass wall that Paul Rudd and Carrie Coon, they're behind. And then he also pukes on James A. Caster. And that's really all he does in this entire movie. Oh yeah, also in the trailer, there is this like really creepy ghost and I, his name is like Phosphor and he's he's in the Ghostbusters research facility and he has a really cool design, but he doesn't really ever do anything aside from like a stick his head outside of the wall. There's also a uh, particular gluttonous ghost that is returning in Frozen Empire that we should probably talk about. Uh, but first, I'm just thinking about Dan Aykroyd and I just want to double down and say that uh, he definitely has the most lines out of all the Ghostbusters, like out of all the returning Ghostbusters, him and Billy Murray and uh, and Ernie Hudson and Annie Potts. But um, man, man, he 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 hits a home run. Uh, he is just phenomenal in this. Uh, that said, I, I do wish that uh, Ernie Hudson he may have gotten some more scenes, more lines. I mean, he's in it a pretty good amount. But uh, I, I would never say no to to more Ernie Hudson, to more Winston. Who have I not talked about? Uh, Trevor, Finn Wolfhard, he is back. Uh, the, the ladies love him. And uh, from what I gather, um, he is still like in a relationship with, with Lucky, at least I think so. Uh, they embrace, they hug. There's also a lot of talk about sex dungeons, at least in one scene, especially for a PG-13 rated film. Um, but yeah, one thread in this movie, aside from, again, Finn Wolfhard being a Spangler, and also he does get his driver's license, or he has his driver's license in the movie. So go Trevor. Um, but yeah, one of the, uh, the story threads, uh, in this is kind of a, a, kind of like a little side story with him trying to capture Slimer and Slimer is, is living up in the attic of Hook and Ladder 8 of the Ghostbusters firehouse. Uh, and he's just like stealing all the food and he's hoarding it up there. And there's like a bunch of rappers. I mean, you've, you've seen it in the trailers. Trevor does take the honors of getting slimed in the movie. And uh, I know a lot of people out there, they were kind of curious. They were, they were assuming that Slimer was going to be kind of a, a real Ghostbusters rendition of the character, like he, where he was almost like domesticated, kind of like a puppy in, in a sense, you know, he's like the pet of the Ghostbusters, but that that's never the case in this. Um, yes, they, they, they seem like they kind of teeter to that a little bit, like it may go in that direction, uh, especially late in the movie, the way Trevor reacts to Slimer, like he's excited to see him at one point. Um, but this is still very much 1984 Slimer. He's grotesque. He's got one prime initiative in his mind, and that is to eat anything and everything. So uh, yeah, you're not you're not really getting that real Ghostbusters Slimer in this movie. Uh, you're getting that OG style, which I love. And I should also add that uh, Slimer's big old booty. Yeah, it, it, it's also in the movie. And if this review is all over the place, I apologize because uh, again, I'm, I'm kind of doing this without a script, but I'm gonna go back to the OG Ghostbusters, which I guess I kind of am with Slimer, but we're gonna go back uh, to, to Annie Potts, uh, Janine Melnitz. She's in the movie and not, not a massive role, she's in it. She's featured at the end, as we've seen in the trailers, uh, suiting up Melnitz in uniform. William Atherton, uh, Walter Peck Dickless, he's, he's back in Frozen Empire. That shouldn't be too surprising. He was in the, uh, the first full trailer to the movie. And uh, there was a lot of people kind of speculating as to what his role in, in it was gonna be. Like, uh, was he gonna be a judge? There, were, there was kind of like some judge references being thrown around in that trailer. But uh, no, William Atherton, Dickless, uh, he's the mayor of New York City. So yeah, the, uh, the mayor of New York uh, it, it is Dickless. I think that's pretty much the gamut of characters. I did reference Callie earlier, you know, the Spangler clan and everything. She, she's great in this too. Uh, it's amazing because they give her more to do now uh, than just being the, uh, you know, the gatekeeper. She, she straps on the proton pack, the flight suit. Uh, there's also a great moment there where like her and Phoebe, they're kind of having a spat and Phoebe's just like, uh, you know, you wouldn't be a ghost, not her exact words, you wouldn't be a Ghostbuster if your name wasn't Spangler. 
and uh, it's it, ooh, it's a shot. It's it's a shot. Really, no performances, uh, you know, let me down. In any ways, it was just some characters I wish had more screen time. I, I've I've said it like three times already. When speaking about the performances, uh, I, I just want to call out again, Kumail Nanjiani, just stole the film for me. Dan Aykroyd on a whole nother level. You had Bill freaking Murray. To me, this was just like channeling that 84 Venkman. Uh, the role is not nearly as big as 84 Venkman, obviously. He's definitely more of a supporting character. Oh, and I should mention this, uh, all the OG characters, this isn't like a bait and switch. It isn't like Afterlife where you think, okay, maybe they have a decent sized role. Their roles in this are a good size. They don't overstay their welcome and they feel pivotal. They feel like, you know, a, uh, a key point to the plot. Um, so yeah, I, I was happy with how all of them they were portrayed. I just wish out of the three, out of the three original like remaining Ghostbusters, I, I do kind of wish Ernie had a, a few more lines. Have I even talked really about Paul Rudd's performance? Like I, I mentioned Gary Gruberson, the family dynamic, how it got me emotional, but we were like waiting for so long for Paul Rudd to put on the flight suit and the proton pack. And he finally does that. And not only that, but he's in scenes now finally with guys like Bill Murray. You know, like when it comes to Afterlife, uh, he was not really acting with those original OGs. Uh, he was just, you know, he was a terror dog for some of those scenes. And then uh, Callie kind of rescues him at the end and that, that's, that's kind of it. But now he can actually have moments with Dan Aykroyd and uh, Bill Murray and Ernie Hudson. And uh, it, it, it's a treat to see on screen, especially in my opinion, uh, seeing him alongside Bill Murray. And, and I think really the only real criticism that I have for the film is the third act to me it just seems a little short, like the, the events and everything, it just amps up so quickly. I, I feel like a little bit of breathing room could have helped a bit, uh, you know, maybe like an extra 10 minutes or something like that. I don't know, it just it just feels like they go from zero to 60, well, not really zero, the film is never in zero uh, <laughs> at all. Uh, it, it's fun, action-packed, again, hysterical, horror, all this stuff going on. Um, but I just feel like the third act, it just kind of comes about very quickly and then, then you're in it. You know, this is, you're, you're like, oh, this, this, this is the end. This, this is going to happen. And I, I just feel like an extra five minutes, 10 minutes, something like that, just a little bit of breathing room to kind of amp it up a little bit more to kind of space it out. It may have helped, but really that's it. Uh, aside from wanting to see certain characters a little more so on screen and the third act uh, coming about kind of quickly, again, just, just what I felt here. Um, this movie totally worked for me. Uh, I love the fact that uh, it, it kind of like alter. it really it decimates, it changes the structure of what a Ghostbusters movie was and what it could be and what it is and such like that. I am so excited to see where the franchise goes from here if Frozen Empire is a success at the box office, which I, I really, I, I really hope it is. Cast is great, it's well shot. Uh, the mix of practical and CGI effects is done really well. I'd recommend it, you 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 go watch it when it opens this week. If I had to rate it on the, the Slimer booty scale, there it is, I think I'd rate Ghostbusters Frozen Empire an eight and a half out of 10. Also, do not forget after you've seen the film, be sure to come back to this video and comment down below let me know what you think, because I certainly want to know. With that said, that's all I've got for you for this one. As always, subscribe. If you'd like to join up with Ghostbusters News, check out our Patreon page. A link to that is down below in this video's description. And we'll see you right back here next time. Mm -hmm.